Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, we're gonna go over the steps on how to paint this really cute black and white kitten. And what you're gonna realize is even though it's black and white, we are gonna be using shades of gray to kind of paint this and create that, that volume and that illusion of a 3D object on our flat 2D surface. So it is gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, what you're going to see in this video and in the description box below is a supply kit. And in that supply kit is everything that you need to create this particular painting. So click on that link and check out the supplies and gather what you need and then kind of come back and work on this painting. Another thing that you're going to see is what I call a traceable. And a traceable is a tool for you to get that initial composition, that initial drawing on your canvas or your panel before you even start painting. And for my beginner painters and especially first time painters, this is a really good resource for you and a good tool to take out some of the stress of trying to paint. So again, check out the traceables, check out the video on how to transfer your traceable to your canvas or panel. And that way um, it'll make the painting process a little bit easier for you. As we go through the painting process, I want you to have fun. I want you to relax. I want you to paint outside the lines, get a little sloppy, get expressive, have fun. This is not to be taken seriously. I want you to look at this as practice at getting better and more comfortable with your tools in front of you. Cause that's really all art is, is just getting comfortable with your tools. So again, don't take this seriously, have fun. If you are of age, grab an adult beverage, turn on your favorite music, whatever you need to kind of relax and be in your zone while you're painting. So enough talking, let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, so make sure you check out the kit below for all the supplies that you need. And once you've got your setup, go ahead and move over to that area and turn on your favorite music. And as always, make sure you take your progress photos. Now, once you have your transfer, your traceable transferred to your canvas or your panel, we're going to use the small pointy brush and black paint. And I want you to just kind of go over all those lines that you just transferred. And this is really good practice. Whether this is your first painting or you've been painting a while, it's really good practice to get comfortable with the pressure of your brush. And if this is the first time that you're painting, don't stress if some of your lines are really skinny and some of your lines are maybe a little bit fatter or maybe you have the texture of the canvas coming through. Again, I want you to just treat this as practice and you will get better and more comfortable the more that you do this. We will repeat this step at the end of the painting and make these lines a little bit thicker. So as I get to the eyes, as I am right now, you'll notice that I leave a little white spot. It's almost a little jelly bean looking shape. Um, clear in the pupil and I did fill in the pupil with black paint. Now that little white space that we left in the pupil that's the catch light. If you do happen to paint over it while you're filling in the pupil don't stress about that. We can add that catch light again at the end of the painting. So basically I don't want you stressing about a whole lot today. I want you to look at this as practice and the more that you practice something the better you get. So now I want you to pause the video and take one of your progress photos and then we'll be moving into painting our background. And you can pick any color for your background. In this video I'll be using a light pink. So I pulled a little bit of that white aside, added a tiny amount of red to make my shade of pink, and I am using the small flat brush. Now you can either allow your painting time to dry for that black paint to dry, or if you move right into painting your background after doing the outlines, just kind of be really conscious of how close you're bringing your background color to that wet black paint. If you happen to get a little bit black paint in there, just wipe it off with a paper towel and apply your background color again. Acrylic paint is actually a wonderful medium. If you paint anything today that you do not like, you let it dry and just paint on top of it again. 
So now I'm actually adding a little bit darker pink on top of the lighter pink and just kind of being sporadic with it. And as you move your brush on the two colors, it kind of blends. So this is a great place to just play, get kind of expressive and just have fun. If you feel like using your fingers for this and blending paint, go right ahead and do that. So now I'm actually taking a few more little dots of the straight red, and it'll kind of look like little confetti as I drop it on there. And then just again, using the tip of my brush and just moving it around and blending wet paint into wet paint. Very therapeutic, so enjoy. So go ahead and pause the video, take your time to do your background, but pause the video and take your progress picture before you move into the next step. So now we're gonna start on the dark spaces of our little kitten here. We're gonna be using straight black paint. And I'm still using that small flat brush. And we're gonna be putting this into many of the areas that are the darkest for this cat. And as we paint, what you're actually doing by looking at the video and transferring um, your paint to your canvas, you're using the power of observation. You are looking at where I'm applying it and even the shape that I'm making as I apply this color and then you're recreating that on your canvas. If you happen to make some of these shapes a different shape or bigger or smaller than how I paint it, completely okay. This is a place where you get to trust your instincts and just kind of have fun. If you paint outside the lines, totally okay. So again, I'm just kind of putting this black paint in some key areas, leaving some spaces. We'll be going in with dark gray and filling in those spaces next. If you're working on a larger canvas, feel free to use a larger brush. Or if you're finding that this brush is maybe a little too difficult or maybe bigger than you want to use, feel free to move down to the small pointy brush. And if you find that you are holding your breath right now, please breathe. We do tend to do that um, when we're learning something for the first time or we're in the beginning stages of figuring out how we're going to do it. You're doing just fine, so make sure you take a deep breath. Nice, so our little black and white kitty here is really cute. So in the black areas that we're painting, right now we're applying the pure black, but then like I said, we'll be moving into dark gray to fill up the other spaces. Because even though that this is a black and white can uh, cat, we're actually painting shades of gray to create this illusion, to create this volume on this flat surface. And when we move into the white parts of the cat, it's actually going to be shades of light gray. One of the things that I enjoy telling my students in class is that you are a magician right now. You are creating the illusion of a 3D object on a flat 2D surface. And there's something to be said about that. All right, so I think we're going to move to the small pointy brush. There's some black areas that I need to get around the eyes. And again, that bigger brush just isn't going to cut it. And as I'm using the small pointy brush, I am very conscious of the pressure. The lighter my pressure, the smaller the line it creates. And when I'm getting into these tiny areas, I want to be conscious of that. If you happen to go over some of the areas of around the eyes or the smaller areas, again, don't stress about that. We can put the other colors on top of it. So still just kind of cleaning up some of the lines. I think I've got a little more to add to that left eyeball. Yeah, there we go. You're doing a great job. It's already coming so far already. All right, so go ahead and pause your video, take your progress photo, and we're gonna be moving into a dark gray color. And I'm still using that small flat brush, and I'm taking a little bit of white 
and mixing some black in with it and we are going for a dark gray and at this point I believe I actually make my dark gray pretty dark I would actually recommend that you make your dark gray slightly lighter than what I actually make here just to make it a little more obvious for where you can see where you're placing it so again my dark gray is pretty dark it may be hard for you to see where I'm applying it so just Again, use your power of observation to see where I'm placing it and kind of the weird shape, abstract shape that it makes. I am placing some of the dark gray right on top of the black. And again, this just helps give a little bit more of an illusion of some 3D, some volume that we are creating on this flat surface. The brush strokes that I'm using are just kind of short little dash marks or even little dots. Um, this is a kind of a short haired cat, so you can get rather expressive with your brush strokes or you can keep them kind of small and controlled. Totally your call. So again, adding some of that dark gray into the inner ears and on top of some of the black that we already painted. All right, so pause the video and take your progress photo. We're gonna be moving into the white areas of our kitten here and creating a little bit of shading with some light gray. So I am actually grabbing some of that white, putting it aside and grabbing some of the dark gray I was just using to mix with the white. And I actually wanna go a lot lighter than this. So I'm gonna be putting some fresh white on the palette and mixing a little bit more white in with my light gray. Now since we are painting on the white areas of our cat, we don't want to go super dark on our gray, but we still need a little bit of gray to give our shadow areas on the white fur. There we go, now it's a little bit lighter. And again using that small flat brush and I'll be creating some kind of different abstract shapes here to help create that illusion and it helps give us a shadow on the white fur of our kitten here. And again, if you're holding your breath and don't realize it right now, take a deep breath. You're doing a great job. I'm proud of you for just stepping forward and painting at home. It actually takes a good amount of courage to do this. So you're doing awesome. All right, so moving down to that small pointy brush as I get into smaller areas, especially around the face and the nose, still using that same shade of light gray that we already mixed, and still kind of using the little dots or tiny little dash marks um, as I'm applying the paint. Still a good place for you to practice the pressure of your brush. So as we're adding our light gray around the eyes and the nose and in some of these areas um, around the face, again, we're kind of chiseling away. We're creating this volume, this illusion of a 3D object on our flat surface here. And you'll notice that by putting some of that shadow around the nose and even the eyes and the chin and underneath the chin, it's amazing how that plays with our eyes interpretation of what's going to kind of jump towards us being the nose and the chin and what's going to kind of push back by putting a darker color on it kind of like around the eyes or underneath the chin. So you are learning a lot right now. And the more that you do this, the more that you learn to see some of the little subtle nuances and the more that you're comfortable to push some of your spaces a little bit more than you might have been when you were beginning painting. So painting's never about being perfect or being better than somebody else, but it's more about learning a little bit more, seeing things a little bit different than the last time that you painted. So it's kind of cool that art can change your perspective on the world because you will notice things that were always there, but once you look for them and you start recognizing them a little bit more, it changes the way that you look at things. 
And hopefully for the time frame that you are painting, you kind of forget that the rest of the world is out there and you just relax and get lost in this process. It's so healthy to be doing what you're doing. So again, I applaud you. Thank you for painting today. All right, so again, I'm just kind of creating these abstract shapes. <clears throat> when we get to the pause portion, feel free to pause the video for as long as you need and look at the shapes that I just placed on here. So again, pause the video, take your progress photo, and then I'm going to take just a little bit of that gray that we were using and mix it in with the white. So it's almost a white color, but it's a light color light 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 gray and we're going to be filling in the rest of that canvas space pretty much everything except the eyes and the inner part of the ear i am still using that small pointy brush and with this super super light gray color that you're using if you're overlapping some of the light gray that we just put on for the shadow you may notice that and if you're working fast enough, you may notice that the two shades are still wet and you can actually blend the two. So feel free to do that if you're at that point. If you've waited and that light gray is already dry and you're adding this even lighter, lighter, lighter gray and it's not blending, that's okay. That just kind of becomes part of the style of your painting today. If you do decide to paint this painting a couple of times, work your way up to where you paint this whole thing, maybe in a half hour to an hour, compared to maybe the first time that you painted it where it maybe took two or three hours to do that. Notice the difference of how you can blend your colors or how you can't blend your colors given that time frame. And again, if you happen to go over those black lines that we did in the beginning or you paint over some of those shades of gray, do not stress about that. We are blending. You are getting more comfortable right now. And we will do those black outlines again at the end of this painting. So breathe and relax, sing to the music if your favorite song is coming on, but most importantly, just relax. If you are of the age of 21 and you have your adult beverage, enjoy, partake in that or any other extracurriculars that you may have along with you. But this is your space just to kind of escape the world. That's why this is so healthy. Nice. So you can see here where I am still using that small pointy brush. And my paint is still wet. So I am blending with some of that lighter gray in with the color that I'm applying right now. And again, as you're painting, get out of your chair and take a look at your painting from 10 to 20 feet away. It does look entirely different from that distance compared to the couple of feet in front of you as you're painting. So getting a different perspective is a good habit to get into while you're painting, especially in the beginning. Because the joke I usually tell at classes at that point is everything looks better from a distance. All right, so take your progress photo and we're gonna be moving into a medium gray. So again, I'm gonna take some of that dark gray and just add it on top of the lighter gray I was just using. It's a good way to kind of get our in-between colors without mixing the color from scratch. And these are gonna be, this kind of medium gray shade's gonna be hanging out in the ears and a few other key places that we will place it on top of this little kitten. And again, still using that small pointy brush and just kind of little dots or little dash marks and minding the pressure of my brush. Nice, it's coming along really well. You're doing a great job.
If you have to make your shade of gray again, don't stress. We are actually going for a, going back to that dark gray. We're gonna add a little bit of our red to it. So we're gonna make this pinkish dark gray for the rest of the insides of the ears. Again, feel free to adjust your shade of this pinkish gray, pinkish dark gray to your liking. And it may be kind of hard to tell on your monitor if there's any red in with my mixture. Sometimes our monitors and phones have uh, different color calibration. So if you've applied a few uh, dots of your pinkish gray and you need to adjust, feel free to adjust. And what you're actually witnessing is a little bit of color theory because we interpret our colors based on the color that's next to it. So you may mix a color on your plate and you're like, wow, great color, looks awesome. But when you apply it to your canvas and you've already got colors on there, it looks a little bit different, so you have to adjust. So don't be afraid to adjust your shades or your colors. It's okay. So with that dark, uh, the dark, grayish pink um, we're going to fill in the remaining space of both of the insides of the ears and i encourage you to do this painting a couple of times like i said earlier you do get better the more that you practice and after you get kind of comfortable and get some good practice with these realistic colors i encourage you to actually swap out and get some crazy colors in here and do this painting again Maybe instead of black, you use purple, and maybe instead of white, you use light blue. And just have fun. All right, so take a progress photo and pause the video. We're gonna clean our brush, and I believe we're actually gonna move into putting some light pink for that nose on there. So still media or small pointy brush, white paint with a tiny, tiny pinpoint amount of red to make a very light pink, even lighter than our background. And we're gonna fill in that entire nose space. And again, if you apply some paint to your canvas and realize you need to adjust the color, go right ahead. I added a touch more red to my light pink. And if you go over those black lines, again, just take a deep breath and keep painting. We are gonna put a little bit of that pink right underneath the chin, because this is a little kitten, and they have just those cutest little skin showing through around their mouth, their little cheeks and their chin. And again, as I apply this, I'm actually just using little dots. A little bit of that light pink underneath the eyes. Kind of almost where the tear duct would be. I'm just kind of reshaping a few things here. I'm gonna make a slightly darker pink, just a, a few little dots on the nose for a little bit of shading where those nostrils would be. And, and a little bit closer to where those lips meet. Just a slightly darker, not a drastically darker, but just slightly darker pink that I'm placing right on top of the lighter pink. There we go, and there's the ones for the nostrils. And it just kind of hugs the shape of the, the contour of that nose. All right, so pause the video, take your progress picture. We're gonna clean our pointy brush and we will be moving into the eye colors of this little kitten. And we're gonna start with a little bit of yellow and add a touch of raw sienna to it. You can make your cat's eyes any color that you like. If you wanna go more of a yellow green or even blue eyes, feel free to kinda of change the color and make your cat's eyes whatever you feel like. 
So again, small pointy brush, and this is going outside the pupil. When I move my hand, you'll be able to see exactly where they're at. There we go. And again, work on the pressure of your brush. The lighter you touch your brush to the canvas and use just the tips of the brush, the smaller the line you create. Again, if you go over the black pupil or anything else, we can come back with the black at the end of the painting and reapply it. Basically, I want you to just, this is your time away from the world, just relax. You're doing better than you think you are right now. And again, if you have to make your eye color again, don't stress about the exact same shade. We actually have multiple shades of colors in our eyes. And if you do take a look at my website and my other paintings, focus in on the eyes of my paintings and you'll realize that I actually put a lot of colors. When I move into some of maybe more of the advanced paintings, um, maybe I'll go over those uh, in a video. All right, so I think I can actually see where I did go over the pupil um, with my eye color, but again, you'll see at a little bit later that we will be going over that with the black and adjusting. Yep. So now we're actually going to be making a medium, kind of a light gray. We're going to fill in the remaining space around the eyes. Kind of like the kind of more filling in the eye socket actually and it should be these little like almost parentheses shapes around the eyes on both sides of the eyes we're filling that in with our light to slightly medium gray and at this point you have what we call the underpainting, where every bit of the canvas space has some form of paint on it So pause the video and take your progress photo. All right, so now we're going back to the small pointy brush or even your liner brush, and we're gonna be redoing our outlines. So again, as you do this, I want you to make these lines a little bit thicker than we did at the beginning, and I am using black paint, but you're welcome to switch out and use a different color if you want more of a pop art uh, style or feel to your painting. And again, we're just going right over every single line. Now, I keep my canvas in um, the same position just so for video purposes you can see what I'm doing. But if you need to kind of move your canvas, turn it upside down, turn it sideways, because it's easier for you to make a line in a certain direction, feel free to rotate your canvas to make it easier for you. And again, when you get to the eyes, if you need to reshape that pupil and go over the eye color, feel free to do that. But I am outlining the eyes for the eye socket and the eyeball and redoing the pupil as well. If you need to redo that uh, catch light with white, when we get to our white section in the next step, you can redo that catch light. And again, as we do these outlines, the pressure of your brush makes a difference. The harder you push against the canvas, the wider that line is going to be. And again, for my first time painters, you are getting excellent practice right now. You will get more comfortable with skinnier lines the more comfortable you get with the brush. So don't give up. Keep practicing, keep painting, keep your progress pictures, because it is quite amazing to look back and see how far you've come from one painting to the next. And it's nice and very satisfying to be able to have that visual documentation. All right, so same thing as we go around the nose, just mind the pressure of your brush. And if there's any white spots on your canvas showing up, go ahead and just use the black paint and fill that in in the black fur. All right, looking good. So now we're gonna clean the brush. We're gonna move into a light gray 
almost white with just a little bit of our gray into it. And we're gonna put some of those, feel free to practice on the tablecloth or on a scrap sheet of paper if you need to. But we're gonna put some of those uh, fur strokes in the ear, some of those little fuzzy furs. So as I'm doing this, I'm using the extreme last two millimeters of the brush and I'm moving my brush in the direction that the fur in the ear would go. Again, if you need to rotate your canvas because it's more comfortable, comfortable for you to make your brush stroke in a certain direction, feel free to rotate your canvas. But I am using light pressure here and just long little skinny lines or little dots as I move into other areas away from the ear. And where the white fur meets the black fur, I'm gonna put little dash marks over the black to kind of soften that transition, as you can see here. And again, just using the tip of the brush and not a whole lot of pressure as I'm doing this step. If you need to redo the catch light in your eyes on top of that pupil, you can reference that traceable for exactly where it's at and put the white paint on top of the black pupils just to get that effect. Nice, so again, pause the video as needed. If you need to go back and add more fur inside the ears, feel free to do that. Pause the video and take your progress pictures. Now for whiskers, you have your option. You can use a silver or white Sharpie marker or your liner brush with white paint. Both I recommend practicing on a scrap sheet of paper before you do this on your actual painting. With the marker, it is a bit of a flick of the wrist for the whiskers and even the little eyebrow marks. And I can't stress enough, practice on a scrap sheet of paper before you do it on your actual painting. And actually that is, that is it for our painting today. You've done a fabulous job. Thank you so much for painting with me today. All right, I hope your guys' kittens turned out really cute. Um, as you're uploading these to social media, please tag me at Paint with Lovejoy. I really want to see how these are turning out for you, how it's progressing, and just the fun things that you guys are creating. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. Check out my other videos. Check out the future videos that I'll be creating. Leave comments on what you want me to create in the future. I do read those and um, utilize those as making videos in the future. So I really appreciate you guys taking the time to paint with me. It is so therapeutic. Please keep painting. Find as many creative outlets as you can in this stressful world. So happy creating, and I look forward to painting with you again. Cheers. And in that supply kit is everything that you need for a plane to pass by. <laughs> At least Monday, it's not too bad of a traffic day. All right, we're gonna take that again from the top. Plane, we're gonna do that again. Picking up at the conclusion.